Singapore Home Brew on Money FM 89.3. Time to talk about how you can invest in precious gems, even if you are not a billionaire. And joining us to do that are Sophie Cow and Sylvie Cow, the owners of Lexellence Diamond Singapore, a third generation Singaporean family bespoke gem business. Ladies, good morning. Welcome. Great to have you on the show. Hi, Glenn. Hi, Juliana. It's a pleasure to be here at the studio this morning. Thanks and for having me. Thank you for being in the studio. Sylvie, you. you're, you're in the office. How are you doing today? Yes, good morning, everyone. Thank you, Glenn, for having us. I'm logging in from our Raffles Play showroom with the magnificent view of Marina Basin on this uh, bright, clear sky day. Beautiful. And, and Sylvie, I'm going to ask you to pull the microphone a, away from your mouth just a bit. Just okay. a bit. Okay. You're good. Uh, Okay, we'll see if that works in just a minute. Let's start with Sylvie, uh, uh, with Sophie rather, since she's in the studio. Sophie, tell us about the business. Three generations, started with your grandfather. Tell us exactly what you do. Uh, yes, actually, we are French. We're not Singaporean. Okay. Right? Yes, Singapore-based business. We are Singapore-based yeah. business. That's yeah. right. So our, our journey in, um, in, uh, in uh, the gem industry started actually a long time ago in the 1950s. And uh, it started with our grandfather who migrated from Chaozhou province in China mm. to Pailin province in Cambodia. And when he reached, he fell in love with sapphires and rubies uh, because there were a lot of mines uh, of sapphire and rubies in Thailand. And uh, at that time, it was a very hard uh, industry to break into mm. because it was um, very dominated by a close Burmese community. Mm. So to learn from the best, our grandfather actually, uh, uh, he learned the Burmese uh, language. A dialect that they were speaking and uh, he, he also immersed himself in their culture and that's how he became the first uh, Chinese entrepreneur to be accepted in the gemstone community in Pailin and wow. uh, so that was the start of the of the whole whole uh, sapphire and mining business yeah and then there's a, there's another long journey after that because our our family actually our parents took over the business and uh, grew it to one of the uh, largest mine owners in the uh, Palin region. Hmm. And uh, before the Khmer Rouge uh, war, actually in the mid 70s, mm -hmm. our whole family relocated to France. That explains my French I accent. I see. Okay, <laughs> good. So there was a, an imperative to be safe. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. And so from there, they actually uh, pivoted the business to Gems Wholesale. Mm -hmm. And uh, because they had the direct sourcing with uh, mining partners, and they integrated the French fine jewelry. Awesome. Sylvie, let's go to you in the studio. Tell us about, uh, in, in your in your showroom, I should say, tell us about what you're doing now and, and how you are working with customers. Yes, so actually, um, so actually, uh, Glenn, both Sophie and I had an investment banking career prior to joining the family business. So Sophie was on the uh, M&A side, was, well, as was on the structured product, cross-asset classes, kind of type of financial products. Um, mm. But we always had the passion to carry on our family business and legacy. And the time was only right for us to join when we saw that we, we saw the opportunity for us to use our investment uh, background and to value add to the family business. So today we like to apply the investment lens in the gemstone mm. industry by combining actually our gem expertise with the direct sourcing strength that we have. So we can really truly assist clients to efficiently acquire the right uh, type of gem with the right specs and at the right price. So we are really very, very lucky to be uh, in the business of happiness, right? There's only mm. happy people coming to us to acquire pieces to celebrate their life milestones. So be it an engagement, yeah. for wedding, or for nice. a career promotion, etc. Beautiful. I just love listening to a pair of sisters mm. run a business so well. So <laughs> congratulations, Sophie and Sylvie for carrying on your family business from your grandfather's time and doing such an amazing job of that. Well done. Thank yeah. You very much. Yeah. That, that is, that is yeah, fascinating. Is. And, you know, in our previous discussion uh, off air with both of you, one of my big questions was, you know, or one of my big assumptions is, you know, gemstones, having nice jewelry made like this, this is something that is just only for the richest people around and certainly very wealthy people do this, but, but, Working with you in your business, 
people can actually do something in a, with a quite modest amount of money. Uh, talk to us a little bit about that, Sophie. Yes. So, and, and what you can actually do for people. Yeah. Yes. So it's really because we have a kind of a mind to market value chain without intermediaries. So that enables us to um, offer to clients the opportunity to access uh, high quality gems at uh, an attractive entry price. And um, it can start from uh, really a, a few thousand dollars, uh, like about uh, nine ten thousand dollars for about uh, one carat uh, good quality diamond okay yeah so and then a lot of folks uh when when they come to you and you design a piece of jewelry for them and they find the right gemstone a sapphire or a ruby a diamond whatever then then you create something that actually will become sort of a, a heritage piece for them something they can pass on to their their kids or their family members in some way so tell us about the time horizon of how this might become more valuable over time uh, yes. as an investment. Yes. So uh, diamonds and gemstones are definitely not uh, a trading asset. Uh, it's not something that uh, you buy today and sell tomorrow. Mm -hmm. It's more something that uh, will uh, take time to rise in value. So we're looking at a at minimum of five to seven years uh, horizon. Okay. And um, uh, Sylvie here uh, at the showroom can show us a few examples of what we have uh, uh, done for previous clients. All right, come on, Sylvie. Let's see. Let's see so what you got here. In them in the showroom, for example, someone in their 30s or someone in their 60s may acquire different types of pieces, right? So for someone in their 20s and 30s looking at diamond for an engagement ring, for example, may want to look at as a solitaire like this one, of one to one and a half carat size. So it will range from 10 to 20,000. But we've mm -hmm. also seen millennials shifting a little bit away from diamonds and going mm -hmm. into the colored stones, actually, and uh, like blue sapphire or rubies. So let me show you an example of this close to two carat pigeon blood, uh, vivid red pigeon blood, uh, magnificent ruby ring that mm -hmm. is uh, surrounded by fancy shaped diamonds. So this one will be about that 25,000, something like that. And yep. so the pricing point is uh, attractive. If you're in your 60s, you may want to look at something a little bit more in the um, extraordinary type of uh, space because the word of precious gemstone is one that rewards the exceptional. So for example, I do have here a very beautiful emerald ring Hmm. of five carat size wow beautiful because we have seen that actually adding the the color uh is a factor of scarcity and therefore precious colored gemstones like emeralds are those that are are doing well in terms of performance and as well going forward yeah and those of you who are listening on the radio you can go back later on uh and look at our facebook live feed or our youtube live feed or our linkedin videos feed if you want to have a look at some of the uh, stones that uh, that sylvie is showing us and sophie when you when somebody comes to you and they they're not quite sure what they want you know maybe I, you know i want a ring for my wife but i don't really know first of all what to get or how to get it what's the process that you can take them through to help them understand if they're not if they're not familiar with gems already yeah, sure. So we we have to start with uh, setting a certain budget so that we can yeah. work with uh, options that are uh, viable within that budget. Mm. And then we will ask a question, uh, you know, probably about the, the, the style of the of uh, of the future fiance, if it's something more uh, elegant and timeless that she would uh, enjoy or something a bit more sophisticated and more design. And um, we will always start at the beginning by showing a selection of stones. Uh, so is she, is she more into you know white diamonds or colored diamonds or precious gemstones? So a good indication would be colors that uh, she likes to wear, uh, so that it can match her white wardrobe. Mm. And then from there, when we once we have selected the the right stone, then we go into process of designing. So we hand draw a, f a few suggestions uh, depending on the, on the direction of more timeless and simple pieces or more design and modern uh, look. Yeah. And from then, uh, we actually uh, go into handcrafting the piece. And uh, so we actually hold the Joaillerie de France hallmark, which is uh, the highest distinction for French jewelry making. Hmm. So only 15 houses have it uh, in, in France. And what does that and mean exactly? It's, uh, it means um, jewelry from France. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, this is a testimony of uh, the quality of the craftsmanship, of the alloy of the gold that they use, the quality of the setting, and all the, the, the details that goes into the, the, the craftsmanship. 
So you kind of go through the initial design process here in your studio in Raffles Place. Yes. And then you send it back to France, and then they further refine it, and, and you the the customer obviously has a chance to look at it through the process right make sure it's what they want yes sure uh, so along the way we will update uh, the the customer on the process so um, actually we have three production hubs we have uh, in Paris in Hong Kong and in Singapore mm. so depending on the on the design mm. we will produce um, uh, from from different parts of the world but the most complicated ones would definitely come uh, from our French uh, workshop mm. how long does it take let's say you want to design a ring like a wedding type ring yeah. how long does that take from start to finish so it's uh, for simpler design it can be as fast as two weeks mm. and for more sophisticated design it could take up to a month wow yeah. is, is there uh, and Sylvia I'll, br I'll bring you back in I know that you have things that are already pre-made in your showroom I've been to your showroom and I was amazed at all the beautiful uh, beautiful settings that you have there the rings and for men and for women yes, not, not just for women uh, it, are you finding that people would be more interested in designing something or coming in and perhaps purchasing something that you've already had designed? Sylvie, what, what, what have you noticed? I think it, it's quite personal, right? Some people may come in with really ideas that they have in mind um, and we can help them with the, um, the sort of directions that they are giving us to check on the feasibility on the pieces as well or as well to advise uh, how to achieve the effect that they wouldn't want to have. Uh, the showroom uh, obviously gives them a lot of uh, things to look at and guide hmm. them in their process of selecting the right one. So I would say the level of details can vary uh, depending on how um, the client would want to have a, something a little bit simpler or more intricate to tell uh, about their story, express an emotion, something meaningful that they would mm -hmm. like to have uh, and passed on to the next generation, for example. Wow, interesting. Sylvia and Sophia, on a, on a, on a tangent, um, do you ever, are you ever interested in lab-grown diamonds? Because I read that you can now grow them in the lab and they are pretty good as well. Have you ever explored that? Um, so for us, we are actually working with only naturally mined, naturally mined diamonds. diamonds. So it's um, there is a, uh, actually lab grown diamond have been on the market for a number of years. It's really not a new uh, yeah. comer, but uh, it has uh, you know uh, had a mark created a market of its own, and uh, there is very distinct distinction between uh, the you know the target clientele that it appeals to. So are you saying the quality of the diamond is just simply subpar? Um, no, actually, um, chemic, the chemical composition is the same, but uh, is the perception of value that differs. I so, see. So actually, when you look at naked eye, it's impossible to differentiate. Wow. But then <laughs> when you uh, go into the certification with the, the most renowned uh, gem, lab, gem lab is actually the GIA. So the GIA would have tools to actually differentiate between mine diamonds and lab-grown diamonds. And so if it's a lab-grown diamond, it will be written on the certificate. Mm. And uh, and from then, actually, you can uh, you, we have seen that lab grown diamond have been uh, con uh, have been uh, uh, sold at a discount to mine diamonds because the supply is actually infinite, whereas mm. uh, you know naturally mine diamond. Uh, the but Sophie, are you infinite. saying from using the naked eye, I cannot tell the difference? A naked eye, you cannot tell the difference. Wow, Glenn, yeah, you know, save a lot of money on that <laughs> diamond necklace. <laughs> yes, so it depends on what your I guess I guess what your desire is, right? Exactly. Something that's natural or yes. something that's So manual, there is right? this emotional value of something natural, something yeah. that has been grown of in course. the lab. Yeah, and then the second is actually the resale value. So we, we only, from the investment angle, we only work with naturally mined diamonds because uh, lab grown diamonds don't have much design uh, resale value. So they sell at a 20, 30% discount a few years back and now yeah. it's more like 50, 60, yeah. 70% right. discount. And, and Sylvia, I'm going to bring you in for the last question. I think it's, it's, a, it's, it's one that a lot of people want to know about, which is our conflict gems, mm. conflict diamonds, conflict other gemstones as well. Of course, we know Myanmar is, is famous for, for gemstones and perhaps there are people out there that are sensitive to not wanting to purchase precious stones that might have in some way contributed to, uh, to unrest, civil unrest. Um, how do you guys guarantee that the stones that you are using are conflict-free? 
Yeah, so uh, it's definitely a very uh, important um, value, you know, sustainability and ethical practices, and it's been at the core of uh, our company's heritage and what we foresee for the future. Mm. And uh, so um, across the value chain, actually, there's a, a lot of initiative that, uh, um, you know, other players like us have been put in place. So at the yeah. mining level, we actually only work with uh, Kimberley certified mines that guarantees that uh, the diamonds uh, are conflict free. Mm. And uh, actually we source 90, over 90% of our diamonds from Canada, which has very strong ethical practices. Mm. And then at the jewelry making level, actually we only work with ethical and recycled gold. Uh, so uh, it's a, it's an important uh, sustainability practice. Yeah, gold. Practice. Yeah, I forgot gold is part of that whole yes, value chain as well, yes. right? So you you don't yeah. want to have uh, any gold that has been treated with mercury uh, that is very harmful to the environment and for yeah. uh, the, so, uh, the the society in general. And then um, we we also have uh, put in place uh, ethical code of conduct with all our uh, partners so that we make sure that uh, ethical practices are, are put in place. So uh, these nice. are things that we, we have put in place, some of our uh, other players in the market as well. And, uh, you know, we in the future, we, uh, we would like to work towards a, mar a mind to market a traceability uh, with documented evidence. So that's what we aim for. So when somebody buys something, not only is it something that's made for them specifically, but they are absolutely confident that this is a uh, that that the value chain that this gem has traveled and the setting has traveled. Are, are conflict free are, are the highest yes. or better best quality they can get right definitely yeah very interesting Sylvie um, I'm going to leave it with you the last word how does somebody find you if they want to come into your showroom and and perhaps work on a, a piece of bespoke jewelry Yes, we'd love to welcome you in. We're at the Raffles Play Showroom overlooking the Marina Bay Sands and we'll be uh, happy to kickstart the journey alongside and provide you our gemstone expertise and walk you through the bespoke journey at the French Jewelry Craftsmanship. Nice. And the company is, you also have a website as well, right? For your company, L'Excellence, L apostrophe E X C E L L E N C E. Dot com, right? L'excellence diamond in one word dot com. L'excellence diamond dot com. Awesome. Sophie Cow, Sylvie Cow, thank you so much for being with us today to talk to us about this fascinating, uh, fascinating way to get some interesting looking jewelry. That's also a great investment. Thank, thank you very much, Glenn and Juliana. Thank you for having thank us. Thank you, Sylvie. Thank you, Sophie.